naming conventions. So we need to have naming conventions for things because at some point things move out of theory and they're actually on a hard drive and they're in checked into a database in Perforce and you need to access them. The game needs to access them and you need to do it accurately. <coughs> so things have to really get uh, accurate at this point. So that's why we have naming schemes and also quite likely you as a data designer don't stand alone. So watch out for artists uh, because they name things horribly. I say just kidding, but I'm not. They really do. They're horrible. Uh, they name things whatever. They name things Bob with blue hair. Like, no, that's that's my barbarian class. <laughs> the, the mesh is named Bob. Uh, they do this all the time. But not to pick on them too much. Lots of other people do it too. And we don't want to be them because us as the data guys, uh, the system guys can get away with some of this, but the data guys, we as data guys, things have to be accurate or they become a jumbled mess. So how do we name things accurate? Should be simple, right? No. It's the opposite. Uh, order compound names from most specific to least specific. This is the opposite of what we do in English. In English, you could say, I saw a small, small what? Green, uh, small green what? Slimy, small green slimy what? Alligator. Oh, okay. That was the important information I needed to know. An alligator. I was searching for an alligator. I don't need to know all the adjectives. So what we do in English, we flip in reversed. So a big fast blue car becomes car big fast blue. And there's a few pieces of information encoded into this. By me creating this name, I have determined the data factors that are most important to me because uh, maybe this car has an oil capacity and it has a wheel size, right? I didn't include that in the name. I only included the pieces of data that are important to me. Uh, and uh, obviously, by reading the name, you can see the data that are most important to me is that it's a car, first. Second, that's a big car. Third, it's a fast car. And blue, that's a fourth car. And in those order. So as data designers, if we create a name from the most specific that is most important to us as a data designer, and then dial it down to the least important. Now, an artist may name everything blue because they like blue things. Uh, or a producer may name uh, something fast because they like fast things, but that is up to us as data designers to enforce these rules across the board so that we don't have different naming conventions uh, and things are an entire mess. And as an example, you can see this clearly shows, I've got all my cars up here, I've got all my vans down here, because remember, that's the most important thing to me. What kind of vehicle? Car or van. Gotcha. And then my second most important thing, all of my big cars are here. So you can just read this uh, backwards. Blue, fast, big car, right? That sounds more like English. Or fast, blue, big car. Or big, fast, blue car. Like any of those uh, in English make more sense. But for us as a data designer, most important, second most important, third, and so on. Uh, you want to keep a, a limit to how big your names get, but that's really a, a practical limit uh, based on uh, what engine you're using, what game you're doing, the number of attributes, uh, the number of meshes you have, who you're working with. But this is more just a general, when you think about naming things and how you're going to name things, if you don't know, uh, start the opposite. What's the most important thing about that? That's the, the name. What's the second? That's the second part of the name. How far do I have to go? That's up to you. Uh, but it's as far as you can read, maybe as far as your data can display. Next up, uh, this is just a little quip that's just thrown in there. I didn't know where to put this. We didn't know where to put this in all of Full Sail's curriculum, so we're sticking it in here. Uh, and this is data validation. Uh, and But this is also part of being a data designer. If I sent out uh, a question to our class and I said, how many cars do you have? I might get the response to, that's great, because I can do math on that. I might get TWO in English. I can't do math on that. That stinks. A couple, okay, well, I know what you mean, but a computer doesn't know what you mean. A red one and a blue one, oh, that's the worst, uh, because you're describing things and not giving me the number. So all bad, good. Uh, we as data designers, we need to quantify things in numbers, because if I said, how many cars do you have, and I sent that out to everybody, maybe I want to do the average number of cars uh, owned by people who take this class, right? There's no way I can do that with anything but this first one. Uh, and there's two methods you can do this. In Excel or any other spreadsheet, you can force validation. It's under data in the, the select. Select data validation, put it in there. Or if it's not in Excel, 
you can ask and enforce. Please uh, submit as a, an actual number, <laughs> a numerical value, something like that, right? Uh, if it's a validated list of uh, select which presidential candidate you want, uh, you don't want to get uh, Sanders, comma, Bernie and Hillary Clinton and Trump, right? You want, say, please select last name, comma, first name. So everything comes in the same way, and that way you can do tallies, uh, counts, averages, that kind of thing.